Hello people, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about this thing. The good old iMac G5. But, unlike the iMac G3 video a year later, um, video, this is the iMac G5 a year later, um, this video doesn't really have much of a happy ending. I've not used this iMac G5 properly since probably about July and yeah it gets various problems when you try and turn it on in this case it's given this which I have literally never seen before um now I should probably talk about I'm used to the power button being on the other side because that's what it is on like Intel Max, or well, I think the aluminium's the first to have the power button on this side. Um, yeah, so I got this on Max G5 a year ago. Um, well, a year ago and a day. Now, um, I got this on a Sunday. The first um, on Max G5 Adventures was actually released on the um, Monday which honestly didn't know. And even then when I got it, it was being problematic. This isn't like a new thing, this iMac being problematic. Now I should probably mention how much I got this iMac. I got it for 10 quid, which isn't really that bad. So this is a two um, gigahertz model. Um, it's the ambient light sensor revision. I think the non-ambient light sensor revision. Not the other, the original variants didn't actually have a 2 gigahertz variant. I might be wrong. Don't quote me on that. Now, yeah, as you can see on here, it's currently giving me a white screen. Now, I have used this quite a bit. So, this shipped with, um, we got it not when it originally was manufactured, with 1.5 gigabytes of RAM and a 250 gigabyte hard drive. I've currently got the original hard drive in here. I did actually put an SSD in here um, recently, like as in one of my SSDs recently. Um, yeah, so when I, not long after I got it, I did end up putting an SSD inside here. And basically, that SSD is somewhere, probably not in there. In there, I don't know. But it's in one of these computers, or it could be worth those two. It might actually be this one that was originally in here, um, in here before filming this video. Um, so I put that SSD, and that, that install that I did on this iMac basically became the base Tiger install that I use on basically all of my PowerPC Macs, which is ridiculous because I've just copied like the same install with like the same background, the same things on the dock. All of that came from this. So this is in a way, this iMac is actually quite significant, which is weird. Um, yeah, I use like the Tiger installer discs. Now, I should probably mention, when I got this, I didn't just get the iMac. I got the power cable, which is currently actually being used for that. Um, I also got... Da, 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 the user guide. Which sounds cool, but hmm, it's not really worth it. It not really make a worthy contribution, you could argue. So how about this? It actually also came with my Mighty Mouse, which is currently on my bed somewhere. I, I see it, I can't reach it. This Mighty Mouse. Now where I got it, I should probably mention, it didn't have the blue tape. I actually added that on. And also, somewhere where I honestly don't know where it is, um, is the matching keyboard. I think it's actually down here. Yes, it is. 
the matching keyboard where guy at dump why the t left of was on um this has sort of been a thing problem with the last few months basically the t letter is really like loose for some weird reason and that's why it's missing it's fell out and i've not been able to find it um and if i'm being honest i've got way more use out of these two things than this whole imac unless you count the me my install that i originally did on here of tiger now even when i got it it was quite unstable um it kept on giving like the cpu errors like the big crash screens the blah 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 and yeah it wasn't quite like that where you've got like the weird graphical artifacts and it took me a lot of troubleshooting just to get into the mac os install and basically what i had to do was remove the 512 meg stick that originally came in here so it basically got downgraded to one gig of ram and yeah to this day it's still got that one gig of ram because i can't use that stick of ram in my power max g5s these are do these are quads so they use ddr2 um this you can't use it even though this one's for parts you can't use it because um the ram's lower clock speed and then the other power max g5 same as this this and the other power max g5 is the same ddr ram that's a higher clock speed than the imac so and i don't have like and you know like the powerbook g4 uses so dim and blah 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 so the ram has been basically useless to me unfortunately um but as i said the keyboard and mouse are by far the most significant things i should also probably mention it also came with the two install discs that I've got somewhere oh what's it doing it just gave me a white screen showed the Apple logo and then white screen for me amazing yeah so unfortunately this iMac G5 is really quite useless I don't really know what to do with it it's sort of the prop I guess um yeah, it just doesn't really function. Um, I, I have been considering... Oh, I've done it again. I'm too used to the Intel iMacs. Um, yeah, I have considered getting another Power Mac, um, iMac G5. Um, I probably will not go for the iSight model just because this is really easy to open. Now it's saying it's got no bootable disk, no bootable thing, which is really weird. So I don't know what's happened there. Or it's done whatever that is. I've done the same mistake once again of going to the wrong side for the power bulb. Yeah. And it looks like, oh, it's actually going into like Apple, whatever, I know what this is called. Apple hardware test. That's new. I've literally never used Apple hardware test, by the way, just so you know. Um, I can hook up a keyboard and mouse. And yeah, I guess this, in a way, this becomes a iMac G5 adventures, ironically. Typical iMac G5 fashion. Nothing, it's frozen. Amazing, right? I do like the URI of this already where it's got like the Mac OS 9 style. Although ironically, this dialogue of, you know, use language as the main language I wasn't, I don't think was actually a thing in, I'll do it again, wasn't actually a thing in Mac OS 9. So it's like a weird sort of theme. But, um, yeah it gives you the dream of the the un 
impossible dream of MacWest 9 on a G5 computer, you know. Will this actually end up being able to boot? That's the question. And it's done. Yeah. Okay, so it's now actually saying invalid memory access. Interesting ever, right? Because maybe that means there's some weird RAM issue. So maybe the other stick of RAM has now also gone bad. I don't know why. Also, that's, that's, if I said that was the T key, that's the Y key, actually. I've done Mac boot. It's not going to work. But, yeah. Just a poor iMac G5. You know, turned off instantly there. Interesting. But, um, yeah, I think it's quite sad, really. You know, this doesn't work. I mean, it didn't really necessarily work in the first place. But as I said, keyboard, mouse. Um, maybe I'll try and get it up and running. But I've tried so many times. Um, it probably won't actually be able to get into macOS. So I've swapped out the RAM with the 512 meg stick. And I mean, it's affected something technically. I've done it again. Um, but it's basically... Still, I mean, it's worse now, arguably. It's black screening. There's no screen turning on. So, yeah. Maybe it's just RAM that's currently the issue. Um, and if so, there's really not much I can do. I don't have any, you know, spare RAM. Apart from the two sticks that originally came with it. Because of what I said earlier. So, yeah, there's basically, yeah, basically, this doesn't have a good ending. That's the truth, unfortunately. But, yeah, hope you enjoyed this and goodbye.